All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another Sunday worship service. I hope you all have had a blessed week so far. Um, today's call to worship passage comes from Psalm chapter 9, verses 1 through 2. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart. I will recount all of your wonderful deeds. I will be glad and exult in you. I will sing praise to your name, O Most High. This passage is a very wonderful call to worship because it tells us in very specific detail how to give thanks and worship God. The first thing to note is that the psalmist calls us to give thanks with our whole heart. And I want to emphasize on the word whole because there are times where maybe we're not, very, we're not feeling it. Maybe something rough happened during the week. Maybe you just finished pulling all-nighters for a midterm on Saturday. But we can clearly see that we are called to worship God with our whole heart and to position ourselves to exult in God and with gladness. And not only that, the psalmist follows this with a reminder to recount all of God's wonderful deeds. We may praise God in the good times of our lives when there are times of peace. But when trials come towards us, it's become a lot harder um, and it's become a lot easier to forget all the blessings that God has given us because we are so blinded by our hardships. So at this time, as we go into a time of worship, let's recount all of our blessings and give thanks to God as we come to him in worship. Let's pray. Father God, I just want to thank you for gathering us here today under your name as we come into a time of praise and worship. I pray that you will move our hearts to worship you in exaltation as we reflect on the blessings you have given us. Even through our hardships, let our hearts look past our struggles and see your wonderful deeds for us. Because you are for us, not against us. Thank you, God, for your love to us. Lord, we love you. We thank you. And it's your precious son's name we pray. Amen. Good morning, church. Let's all rise for a time of worship. Sing to the king. Sing to the king who is coming to reign. Glory to Jesus. The Lamb thou wast slain, life and salvation, his empire shall bring joy to the nations when Jesus is King. For his returning, for his returning, we watch and we pray. We will be ready the dawn of that day. We'll join in singing with all the redeemed to say. And she 
Jesus is all we need. Lift up a heart of praise. Sing now with voices raised. Jesus, sing to the King. For is returning. For He returning. We watch and we pray. We will be ready the dawn of that day. We'll join in singing with all the redeemed. Satan is vanquished and Jesus is King. So come, let us sing a song, a song declaring that we belong to Jesus. He is all we need. Lift up a heart of praise, sing now with voices raised, Jesus. Sing to the King. From the far side of the chasm, you held me in your sight. So you made a way across the great divide. Left behind heaven's throne to build it here inside. And there at the cross, you paid the debt I owed. Broke my chains, freed my soul For the first time I had hope Thank you, Jesus, for the blood applied Thank you, Jesus, it has washed me white Thank you, Jesus, you have saved my life Brought me from the darkness into glorious light. You took my place, laid inside my tomb of sin. You were buried for three days, and then you walked right out again. And now death has no sting and life has no end for I have been transformed by the blood of the Lamb thank you Jesus for the blood applied thank you Jesus it has washed me white
Glory to His name. Glory to His name. Glory to His name. There to my heart was the blood of What gift of grace, what gift of grace is Jesus my Redeemer? What is no more for heaven now to give? He is my joy, my righteousness and freedom, my steadfast love, my deep and boundless peace. To this I hope, my hope is only Jesus, for my life is wholly bound to Him. Oh, how strange and divine, I can sing, all is mine, yet not I, but through Christ. Is dark. The night is dark, but I am not forsaken. For by my side, the Savior, He will stay. I labor on in weakness and rejoicing. For in my need, His power is displayed. To this I owe. My shepherd will defend me Through the deepest valley he will lead Oh, the night has been won And I shall overcome Yet not I, but through Christ No fate I dread, no fate I dread, I know I am forgiven, the future sure, the price it has been paid, for Jesus bled and suffered for my pardon, and He was raised.
Let's pray. Dear Holy Father, oh God, we come together, God, as one body. God, and we sing these songs to the one and only King. Uh, we sing these songs to the one and only Creator, God, who is above all things, who, who loves us and who created us, God. And even though we fall short, God, even though we, in our sin, God, in our, in our own fleshly desires, God, as we desire after the created things and not the Creator, God, um, even though we hate you, God, and we were your enemies, God, you loved us first. God, we want to sing these songs of gratitude. We want to sing these songs to give you all the glory. Because truly, God, when the day comes, God, and when the race is complete, God, we can only say that it was through Jesus Christ and his blood that washed away all of our sins, God, um, that we may be with one with the Father, God. Only through Christ that is within us, God, and only through the Holy Spirit that is within us, God, God, can, that we can try to live um, lives, God, that is truly glorifying to you, God, and an act of worship to you. So, God, as we just go through the rest of our service, God, as we receive your message today through your servant, Pastor Brad, um, God, may his may the words that he speaks, God, may be, it may be your words, God, be words of, of peace, God, may be your gospel, God, that it may penetrate our hearts, God, so that we may be able to offer up our lives as a living sacrifice to you. So thank you once again for this time. I'm just going to pray. Amen. The confession of sins passage uh, comes from Romans chapter 1, verses 29 to 31. They were filled with all manner of unrighteousness, evil, covetousness, malice. They are full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, maliciousness. They are gossips, slanders, haters of God, insolent, haughty, boastful, inventors of evil, disobedient to parents, foolish, faithless, heartless, ruthless. This passage, it really shows, it brings to light the true nature of mankind, that we are the ones who reject God and full of sin. And Paul here, he lists many characteristics of humanity as a whole. Uh, with some of them being foolish, faithless, heartless, and ruthless. And we have no excuse for our sinfulness. There is no one to blame but ourselves, because the state that we are in is due to the natural consequences of our sin. It's in our nature. It's because of our depravity. And we, we rebel against God to get what we want, our personal earthly desires, and it hurts him. It hurts him when we prioritize our fleshly desires to get what we want from our own pleasure rather than prioritizing his glory. So at this time, as we enter into a time of confession, let's all reflect on the sins that, um, that ha may have built up in our hearts throughout this past week and just give it all to him. Let's pray. The assurance of pardon passage comes from Romans chapter 1, verses 16 to 17. For I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For in it, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith for faith, as it is written, the righteous shall live by faith. Let's pray. Father God, as we come to you in uh, repentance and confession, I ask that you will just convict us through the Holy Spirit and make us truly aware of the weight of our sins. And even though we deserve death for this, we rejoice by the fact that the burdens of our sins have been lifted by your Son. But let us not forget what you have done or take it for granted. Continue to remind us of this joy we hold because of your Son who died on the cross and gave us another chance at eternal life. Lord, I ask that as we turn into your word, 
that you will lift up Pastor Brad as he preaches your word. Please bless him and guide him as we listen to his sermon. And I pray that it will just touch our hearts as we apply your word to our lives. Lord, we thank you for everything that you have done, and we pray this in your precious son's name. Amen. Uh, let's all take this time to greet our neighbors, and the youth group is, will be dismissed. Uh, well, greeting saints, that's what you are. Uh, it's not a special title for some special people. You are saints, and you have been separated unto God to fulfill his purposes. Before I read the text this morning, I'd like you to join me in prayer. Lord Jesus, I thank you that you are the one who has been raised and that you are a right hand of the Father and that you ever live to make intercession for us. And I pray this morning as we go through this passage of Scripture that it would be encouraging, that it would be comforting, that it would be instructive. And that these words that you are even praying now for each of these whom you call by name, that it would impact the way that they think and the way that they live to the honor and glory of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. If you have your Bibles, I'd like you to turn to uh, John chapter 17. And this morning we'll be looking at verses 20 through 26. Follow along as I read. If you don't have a Bible, it'll be up here. And I'm reading from the ESV. Jesus prays, I do not ask for these only, but also for those who will believe in me through their word. That they all may all be one, just as you, Father, are in me and I in you that they also may be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. The glory that you have given me, I have given to them that they may be one, even as we are one. I in them, and you in me, that they may become perfectly one, so that the world may know that you have sent me, and love them even as you have loved me. Father, I desire that they also, whom you have given me, may be with me where I am, to see my glory that you have given me because you loved me before the foundation of the world. O righteous Father, even though the world does not know you, I know you, and these know you. These know that you have sent me. And I made known to them your name, and I will continue to make it known that the love with which you have loved me may be in them, and I in them. Before we go through this passage, I just want to give a shout out to a few people. First of all, I want to give a shout out to Phil, um, who led us in worship today. We, uh, he and I played golf a couple weeks ago. I played really bad. Um, hadn't played in a while, and it showed. But as we were as we were winding up the round, I said, "Phil, would you read through John chapter seventeen, verses twenty through twenty six, and would you think on it, and then would you choose the responsive hymn that we're going to sing today?" And so I don't know about you, but as we went through the worship songs today, I was blessed. I was encouraged, and a lot of that just flowed out of Phil's heart as he chose those songs with the worship team and as he chose the responsive hymn that we're going to be singing after the message. I want to give a shout-out, too, to David Myung and also Brian and Eunice. 
Brian and Eunice know because I asked them a few weeks ago to read through the passage. John chapter 17, 20 through 26. And I asked them to write reflection questions. The, I can write reflection questions, but these are reflection group leaders, David and, and Brian and Eunice and others. But I wanted them to interact with the passage and to be thinking on it, meditating on it. And I wanted it to flow out of their hearts and lives. And so they wrote the questions. So if you have any questions on the questions, ask David and, or, and, or ask Brian and Eunice. And Brian said, no, 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 no. I want to remind you that this has been a three-part series. And the theme of this series is the glory of God. The word glory appears in each of these three sections of John chapter 17. First of all is Jesus prays for himself. He prays that the glory of the Father, the glory of the Son would be manifested. He says, the hour has come. Father, glorify the Son in order that the Son may glorify you. In verse 5, he says, Father, glorify me in your presence with the glory that I had with you before the foundation of the earth. You go down to verses 8 through 10, and Jesus says that he has manifested the name of the Father to those whom had been given to him. And that they, he had given them his words that have come from the Father. And he says, they have received these words. And they have come to know in truth that I came from you. And they believe, Father, that you sent me. And then in verse 10 he says, and I'm glorified in them. And then he begins to pray for them. He prays that they would have joy in a world like the world we're living in. How is that possible? Because they're kept by the name of the Father. They're kept by the words that Jesus has given to them. And then he says, Father, I'm sending them out into the world just as you sent me into the world and the world is going to hate them. And the devil is going to oppose them. And I'm praying that you will protect them by your name and by your word. Set them apart in truth. Your word is truth. And I have given them the, your words. And I want these words to be in their hearts and in their lives. And I want it to protect them and overshadow them. And keep them as they go through this world in which we live. I am leaving but they are here and I'm praying for them. And he's praying for the glory of the Father and the glory of the Son. And then as we read in our scripture passage today, again he prays. And he prays for the glory of God to be revealed in us by our unity with the Father, with the Son, and with one another. And then he prays again, Father, I want these who have believed in me to see my glory. And I don't know if you listened and thought upon the worship songs today, but that's what they were all about. And so as these individuals who I have named have processed this passage, thought on this passage, I prayed for them. And I said, Father, I want so much that they would be comforted, that they would be encouraged, that they would be instructed by the words that you are praying for them. And I can tell you that I've been praying for each one of you, not by all by name, because I don't know all of your names, but I have been praying for you. You who know the Lord Jesus, you who walk with the Lord Jesus, and I have prayed this prayer over you that Jesus is praying. And then if you are here today and you don't know Jesus, 
I pray this in love, but I pray that the Holy Spirit will convict you of your sin. Your sin of unbelief in the one whom God has provided to be your Savior. I have prayed for you that the that the Holy Spirit would convict you of righteousness and your need of a right standing with God. And I've also prayed for you that the Holy Spirit would convict you of judgment because apart from the, from the Son, you are under the judgment of God and the wrath of God. He who has the Son has life. He who does not have the Son shall not see life. But the wrath of God abides upon him. So I've been praying for you in love. And I've been praying for you as saints. As those who are called by the name of the Lord Jesus. That you would understand that the Lord Jesus is praying for you even now. And that God would be glorified in you. I want to remind you again of what the glory of God is. What is the glory of God? When I, I shared this with you before, but when I was young in my faith, somebody told me that my chief purpose was to glorify God and to enjoy him forever. And I didn't understand what the glory of God is, much less how to glorify God. I didn't understand that. They recited a verse to me, whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, Brad, you are to do all to the glory of God. Great. Great. What is that and how do I do it? And it wasn't until I began reading through the Bible and reading through scripture again and again and again. And I did this in high school. I did this in college. And I began to memorize it and I began to meditate on it that I began to understand what the glory of God is and how I glorify God. And two passages of scripture I dire have directed you to that have helped me to understand the glory of God. One is in Exodus chapter 33. As Moses asks the Lord, show me your glory. And the other is in Luke chapter 2. Where, where the angel of the Lord appears to shepherds and the glory of the Lord shone round about them. Let me just review those passages before we get into our text today. Moses prays in Exodus 33, show me your glory and listen to what the Lord says to him. I will make my name, keep that in mind as you read through John 17, I will make my name pass before you. And so in Exodus 34, the glory of God passes before Moses and the Lord announces his name, Yahweh, Jehovah. And whenever you read that name in the Old Testament, and it comes up nearly 6,000 times in the Old Testament, Yahweh. It is a name that describes God's self-existence, but it also describes his character and his desire for relationship with his people. It's used each time when, when, when God enters into relationship with Adam and Eve. It's used in his relationship with Noah. It's used in his relationship and calling Abram out of Ur of the Chaldees. It's used of of God's relationship with Isaac and Jacob and Joseph and Moses and the people of Israel. I want relationship with you. That is what that name means. And that is what Jesus prayed. I have manifested your name, Father, to the people whom you have given me. Think about that. Think about that. And think about Jesus, and in particularly in the Gospel of John. As Jesus comes as the one who is the bread of life, he who comes to me shall not hunger. He who believes in me will never thirst. I am the bread that has come down out of heaven, and I've given my life. I'm giving my life for the world. 
He's manifesting the character, the being, the desire of God to have relationship with you and with me. I am the light of the world. He who follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. He's manifesting the name of God. I am the good shepherd that lays down my life for my sheep. I know my sheep and my sheep know me and they call me by name and I call them by name. He's manifesting the name of God who wants relationship, who wants us to walk with him, who wants us to live for his glory. I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, even though they die, yet shall they live. And he who lives and believes in me will never die. I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father but by me. Jesus is manifesting the name of God. God wants relationship with you. And then God goes on to declare his glory. I am merciful. I am gracious. I am slow to anger. I am abounding in loving kindness and tender mercies. I forgive iniquity and transgression and sin, but I will by no means leave the guilty unpunished. God is loving, God is merciful, God is gracious, but He is all also holy. He is righteous, He is just. And our sins have separated us from God. And so Jesus has entered into this world in order to manifest the name of God, but also to bring us into relationship with him. And so Jesus prays, Father, the hour has come. Glorify the Son, that the Son may glorify you. And if you go to John chapter 12, you'll see what that hour means, where Jesus says, what shall I say? Save me from this hour? No, it is for this purpose that I have come to give my life for you and you and you and you and me. So that the Father may be glorified and the Son may be glorified. Here's the main point of our text this morning. We glorify God by our belief in Jesus, by our oneness or our unity in Jesus, and by our anticipation of being with Jesus. Let's go through the passage, and I'm going to emphasize each of these points. I do not ask for these only. Who are these only? They're the apostles that he's been praying for. In verses 6 through 19. Those who were immediately in his presence. I'm not praying for these now. But also for those who will believe in me through their word. In other words, brothers and sisters, he's praying for you. He's not praying for the apostles. He's not praying for himself. He's already done that. He's prayed for the glory of God to be revealed in himself and in his apostles, but now he's praying for you, and he's praying for me. I don't just pray for these. I am praying for those who will believe in me through their words. Well, where did their words come from? Who's he talking about? The words of Matthew. The words of John. The words of, of Peter. The words of the Apostle Paul. I'm praying for those who will believe through their words. Where did their words come from? From the Spirit of God. Who helped them to recall the things that that the Lord Jesus had said. And wrote it down. Under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. So that we would have his words. So that we could believe in Jesus. Believe in him who had been sent in this world in order to be our Savior and our Lord and our God? And what words did the Holy Spirit inspire them to? The words of Jesus. Where did Jesus get his words? From the Father. 
The words that I speak, Jesus said, are not my own. They come from him who sent me. Do you believe that? The works that I do, they aren't my own. I can only do what I see my father do. The works that I do are not my own. I can only do the works of the father who sent me. My will, Jesus said, is not my own. I have come to do the will of him who sent me. Do you believe that? Do you believe that through the words of Scripture, through the things that the apostles wrote down? Then Jesus is praying for you. He's praying for you who have believed, who have come to know, and have received the words that he has spoken about himself to reveal the Father. To reveal the Father's words, the Father's works, and the Father's will. And if you are a believer today, he is praying for you. Isn't that incredible? Isn't that amazing? That Jesus is ever now at the right hand of the Father interceding for you who believe. Do you believe in the name of the Son of God? What were the words, some of the words that the Apostle John wrote down about our Lord Jesus that perhaps you believe now? Or perhaps that you're considering? Go back to John chapter 1 verse 1 where John writes, In the beginning was the Word. I'm trying to use words right now to communicate. I'm trying to express truth about God, who, who the Father is, who the Son is, who the Holy Spirit. I'm trying to use words to communicate to you. Maybe I'm doing a good job, maybe not, but I pray that the Spirit of God is working through it. When John writes, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God, and all things came into being through him, and without him was not anything that has come into being. Without Jesus, the Word of God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld what? His glory. The glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. That is what Jesus came to communicate. What he came to reveal. What he came to manifest. The heart, the mind, the thought of his Father that he wants relationship with you and with me. The word of God. John at the end of his gospel writes these words. Many other miracles Jesus did in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and believing you may have life in his name. Did you hear that? Life in his name. What did he come to reveal? The name of the Father. The will of the Father. The words of the Father. The works of the Father. To reconcile us to God so that we might have a relationship with him. What else did John write? Well, he also wrote three letters. And in the very first letter, 1 John chapter 1, verse 1, he says, what we have seen, what we have heard, what we have beheld, and our hands handled concerning the word of life. And what we have seen and what we have heard, we proclaim to you also, that you also may have fellowship with us. And indeed, our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. These are the words of the Apostle John. And Jesus is praying for you. I'm not praying for the apostles, I'm not praying for myself. I am praying for those who believe in me through their words. 
And what did Jesus say in John 17, verse 10? If you have received those words, if you have come to know in truth that he came from the Father, if you believe that he was sent by the Father to accomplish your salvation, my salvation, to reconcile us to God, then he's glorified in you. His glory is revealed through what you believe. And that belief is to influence how you think and how you live every moment of every day. Give you an example. This week, I'll give you a victory and I'll give you a defeat in my life, okay? Uh, Judy and I sold a car. It was an old car. It's 15 years old. Been in the family a long time. We needed to sell it. And finally found a buyer. And uh, as we were coming back from, you know, getting the cashier's check and everything like that, um, I struck up a conversation with him. And I said, uh, you know, uh, I know you like to hike. I know you like to go different places. He said, yeah, Yosemite is one of my favorite places. You know, I want to go up to... Uh, to Yellowstone, Grand Teton, see all that. Love to hike. I said, well, when you're not hiking, what do you like to do? He says, I like to read. Really, what do you like to read? Philosophy? Religion? Well, what have you come to believe? And so he began to tell me his belief system. He says, you know, there's something different about you. He says, what is it that you believe? All this time I had been praying, Father, open up a door of opportunity for me to explain the gospel to this guy, but let it be natural. Let it flow out of my heart. And then, Father, may the Spirit of God do his work. That was a victory. That was a blessing. That's what Jesus is talking about, being glorified in us who believe. Let me tell you about a defeat. I had made an appointment for, for at, at, at our mechanic for our other car that has been needing healing, and uh, I was late. I had started off right on time. I was going to get there on time. It was just a few blocks from our house. And I turn left, and I get behind somebody who's in a 35-mile zone, and they're going five miles an hour. And I don't know why I was upset, but I wanted to get to my appointment. And I began to think any number of evil thoughts towards this person. <laughs> and then we come to the, to the signal light for me to be able to turn right. And this person's in front of me. And they don't have a signal light on. And so I think they're going straight. I said, okay, Father, I'm trying to maintain here. I'm trying my best. And I noticed on the back of their, their vehicle is a license plate, and they're not from around here. They're not from California. I said, okay, I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt. So I'm waiting there, and it, cars are going past, cars are going. Finally, our light turns green, and the person goes straight on a, on a green light. And, and I'm thinking, oh, wow. No, they don't go straight they actually turned right the same direction that I'm going. And now I really come unglued because, oh my goodness, this person has been waiting there, has had multiple opportunities to make a right turn, and they just sat there while I stewed. And while I did those things that Pastor Joe has shared with us from Matthew 5 that you're not supposed to do. I had a lot of hatred and a lot of anger in my heart. And the Lord said, Brad, does that manifest my glory? What you're thinking? What you want to say? No, Father, it doesn't. Forgive me. God wants to be glorified through your belief through the words that Jesus spoke that came from his Father. And those words have been made known to us through his apostles in the New Testament and through the Old Testament. We 
we are also display God's glory by our unity, by our oneness with the Father and with the Son and with the Holy Spirit. We live in a very fragmented world. We are divided, brothers and sisters, in this world. Some of those divisions are just natural. Some of those divisions are ethnic. I don't look like you, you don't look like me. Most of you are Korean, some of you are Chinese, some are Vietnamese, but I'm not, I'm not Asian. I don't know what I am. My great-grandparents came from all over Europe. I'm a mutt. I'm a mongrel. I don't know what I am. Jesus is praying for our unity. Sometimes these divisions are geographic. Sometimes these divisions are linguistic. Sometimes these, these divisions are cultural. And if we overemphasize each of these divisions, they can cause problems and difficulties. And they can cause difficulties within the church. And they can be a testimony to the world that we as a church are no different than the world. Would we agree that the world is divided, that the world is fragmented, the world is, is angry, divisive? Yeah. Jesus is praying that the church, the followers of Jesus, would be different. And it was hard for the early church to understand that. If you go to the book of Acts... Division between culture raises its ugly head in Acts chapter 6. There were widows who had a Hellenistic background, a Greek background, who had come to faith in Jesus Christ, and there were also Jewish widows. Those who were culturally like the apostles and like Jesus. And the Hellenistic widows were being neglected in the daily distribution of food. Why? Culture. You're different. You're different than me. We don't know you that well. And therefore, they were neglected. It raises its ugly head, too, in the life of the Apostle Peter in Acts chapter 10. Peter is praying, and the Lord brings before him a feast of unclean animals, and he says to Peter, rise, kill and eat. Oh, no way, Lord. Nothing unclean has ever entered this mouth. Nothing that, that isn't, you know, kosher. I'm not eating that. And what was the Lord's instruction? Well, what the Lord has said is holy. Don't you call unholy. Happens three times. And then some Gentiles, who are not Jews, show up at his doorstep and said, there's a Roman centurion by the name of Cornelius, and he wants to hear what you have to say about Jesus. And so Peter goes. And he shares the gospel with them. And as he's preaching the gospel, the Spirit of God comes down upon the household of Cornelius and they believe and they're saved. But then when Peter goes back and reports to his Jewish contemporaries what he has done, many le leaders within the church said, you went to the home of a Gentile? That makes you unclean. Well, let me share with you what the Lord shared with me. I should not clean, call unclean what the Lord says is holy. And the Spirit of God came upon them just like it came upon us. In Acts chapter 15, one more passage. Paul and Barnabas have gone to the Gentiles and they've preached the gospel. And they've come back and they've reported to the church and they said, these Gentiles have come to faith in Jesus. And there was a segment within the church, who they were Jewish, and they said, we got to make them live like we live. They have to assimilate into our culture. 
They have to do what we do. And the apostles, as they prayed about it, decided that it is by faith in Jesus that these people are made right with God, not by what they do, not by ceremony, not by Jewish culture, but by faith in Jesus Christ. The Apostle Paul put it like this in Galatians chapter 3. You are all, every one of you, sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. Whether Jew or Gentile, slave or free, male or female, you are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus and heirs according to the promise, the promise of blessing that God gave to Abraham way back in Genesis chapter 12, where he said, through your seed, all the families of the earth will be blessed. Brothers and sisters, we may be different cultures, we may be, look differently, we may speak different languages, but we are one in Christ Jesus. We are one with the Father. We are in agreement of our need of a Savior from sin. We are in agreement that Jesus is the one who is the righteous one who provides our righteousness through his death on the cross. And we are one because we have escaped judgment through faith in the Lord Jesus. We are in agreement with who God is, that he has revealed his name to us. This is what makes us one. And it is a testimony to the world that Jesus has been sent into this world to be the Savior. Let me just kind of share a personal story that happened right after Christmas. Our daughter, Amy, who lives in the Middle East, came and she visited here at Hope. And you loved on her. Many of you greeted her, put your arms around her, welcomed her. And afterwards, she said to me, Dad, it felt like home. And I said, Amy, what do you mean by that? She said, well, remember, as kids, we were raised in an international church. We had 15 different nationalities. And I thought, church, that's what church is. And she says, I went to a church where people didn't look like me. And they welcomed me and they loved me. And it's a testimony to the world that we're different because we're one in Christ through what he has done for us. And I want to thank you for that. But that's a testimony to the world that we're different, that we are one with him. Let me just conclude. We glorify God by our anticipation of being with Jesus. And our, and our worship songs this morning brought that out so well. But Jesus said, Father, I want these who believe in me to be with me, that they may see my glory. That they may see the beauty and the majesty and the wonder of being in my presence and in your presence and what that's going to be like. I can only imagine. I think there was a song that was written about that. To see his glory. As we consider oneness and as we consider our anticipation of our, our, our being with him, there's a couple of scriptures that I just want you to keep in mind that might help you put this into practice. One is in Romans chapter 5, verses 1 and 2. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. And we have gained entry into this grace in which we now stand and we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Brothers and sisters, I know that in some ways we don't fully understand what that's going to be like. And in many ways we want to avoid those things that would take us into the glory of God. You know, death, 
suffering, illness, whatever it is. But as followers of Jesus, we can rejoice that Jesus has gone to prepare a place for us, that where he is, we may be also. You see, in Jesus' prayer, he's trying to give us an eternal perspective of what God's desire was before the foundation of the earth, what the God's desire and will is right now, that you believe in him whom he has sent, and that you also rejoice in the hope of the glory of God and being in his presence. The Apostle John said it like this in his first letter. Brothers and sisters, it does not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And everyone who, listen for it, has this hope, purifies themselves from all sin. What does that mean? Well, because of what I believe about who Jesus is, because I believe that he has prepared a place for me and I am going there one day to meet him, and because I believe that one day I shall be like him for I will see him just as he is, I evaluate the things that I do in my marriage and in my family in my relationship to the community in light of those truths. And I look at myself and I say, do I display the glory of God and where I am headed by the way that I think and the way that I live and what I look forward to? Do I have an eternal perspective on the Christian life? Paul says it like this, In Romans chapter 8, I consider that the sufferings of this life are not worthy to be compared with the glory that is to be revealed to us. Do you believe that? Does that describe you and the way that you think and the way that you live? I pray so, brothers and sisters. I have prayed over this for, for a few months now. One of the things that I'm doing with the elders as we're looking at the prayers of the Apostle Paul for the church. And I'll close with this illustration. When Judy and I were in high school, we had youth sponsors, and they were adults. And they were the same age as our parents. Their names were Bill and Mary Dietrich. They've gone on to be with the Lord. And what I appreciated about Bill and Mary is they said, you can come by our house anytime, day or night, we're here. And I love Bill and Mary because every time we went there, they would conclude by praying over us by name, using the words of Scripture. And I don't know if you've ever had that experience where somebody just prays for you by name. And they pray the words of God over you, the words of the Lord Jesus. But how encouraging is that? And I began to incorporate that in in my life, in in, in my ministry, in my prayers for other people. And that's what Jesus is doing in John 17. You want to know the heart of the Lord Jesus for you personally and for your church? Read John 17 and insert the words, Hope Presbyterian Church, and insert your name. That's what Jesus is praying for. And it's all for the glory of God. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, take these words from your words, and I pray that you'll apply them to our hearts, to our lives, that we might live to bring you glory and that we might live in anticipation of your glory. And we pray this for your name's sake. Amen. Let's all rise to respond to the message that we've heard today by singing, How Great Thou Art.
Say, oh Lord, my God. Oh Lord, my God. When I in awesome wonder consider all the works thy hand hath made, I see the stars, I hear the mighty thunder, thy power throughout the universe display then sings my soul my savior god to thee how great thou art how great thou art then sings my soul my savior god to thee how great thou art, how great thou art. And when I think, and when I think that God his Son not sparing sent him to die, I scarce can take it in. That on the cross, my burden gladly bearing, he bled and died to take away my sin. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee, how great thou art. How great thou art Then sings my soul My Savior God to thee How great thou art How great thou art When Christ shall come When Christ shall come with shouts of acclamation and take me home what joy shall fill my heart then I shall bow in humble adoration and there proclaim my God how great thou art then sing my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great how great thou art, how great thou art. May be seated. All right, sweet. At this time, we're going to do an offering and tithe. So if we could get Elder Jim to come up and pray for us. Thank you. Let's pray. <clears throat> Father God, thank you for gathering um, your people at this place to give worship and glory unto you. Father, you are um, um, amazing and, and gracious to us. By sending your son, who is good shepherd, who laid down his life for the sheep. Father, uh, we are so grateful in thanksgiving how you have loved us unconditionally. The love we do not deserve, but yet you die for us. And with this, may we turn our eyes toward you, give um, glory unto you with our life, oh God, that we have here in the earth, oh God. And thank you for blessing us so much. And we lift up 
our tithes and offering unto you, for all good things come from you. And also, I pray for all the missionaries that you have uh, called and sent out throughout the world, especially our missionary, um, Damien Youngmi, who are in Japan. Would you use them to further your kingdom there? The people in Japan will believe you, and we gl give glory and thanksgiving as we put together, uh, give worship unto you, O oh Lord. Uh, just thank you once again for uh, Pastor Brad to sharing the gospel. May you transform our hearts and move us, O oh God. Pray us in, in Christ's name. Amen. Thank you. All right, guys, welcome to Hope Presbyterian Church. Uh, if you guys are new here, if you look to the side, we have a welcoming team. Um, yeah, they're there just to welcome you guys. So, yeah, please go up to them and... They're, they're for you guys. Um, next, uh, reflection time. So after snacks, uh, we actually have a time of uh, reflection where, um, yeah, where some of us actually came up with some reflection questions to go over today's passage. So yeah, please attend that and um, let us just go over what we learned today. Uh, next, baptism and confirmation. Um, we've talked about this for a couple of weeks now. We actually have baptism and confirmation coming up. And we're going to do it for Easter service. So if you guys want to be baptized and confirmed, please talk to P. Joe. And also there is a, um, a sign-up sheet on Facebook. So I'll post that again for you guys so you guys can sign up if you guys want. Next. Uh, yes, so P. Joe is actually out of town. He's um, attending his niece's wedding. And he's actually speaking for uh, Young Nock Church this week. So, yeah, just pray for them for safe travel back. And Next. Uh, Mexico Mission, we're actually going to start up again, so uh, if you guys are interested in just serving our, our missionaries at Mexico, um, it's a really good opportunity. You don't really have to have any, you know, skills as a teacher. We have everything set up for you guys, so if you guys are interested, uh, please talk to uh, Esther, Yunus, and Gina, and also if you're a college student as well, you guys need a ride, just let us know. We're more than willing to do so. Uh, next. Uh, women of Hope, Souls to Souls. Um, yeah, so if you guys are also interested as well, to just get to know your uh, older sisters. Um, I know it's a one-to-one, uh, one one -on -one, right? So Sort of. Okay, yeah, so, but anyway, if you guys are interested in doing that, please um, speak to Gina, and then she'll be more than glad to help you guys. And Saturday prayer meeting, um, yeah, we have our Saturday main, uh, morning prayers, uh, weekly basis. We should be starting up again this upcoming uh, Saturday. And the tax contribution letter, um, again, our email is up there. So if you guys want to get your contribution letter, please email that, and we'll be helping you with that. And I think that's it, right? Awesome. If you guys don't mind standing up, we'll go ahead and do doxology, and then Pastor Brad will come up and do the benediction. Awesome. Three, two, one. Praise God. Receive the blessing of the Lord. Know unto him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before his presence with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power in this world and in the next. God bless you.